Thank you. All right, so this morning we're going to get back into our lesson about Beneath Blue Waters, where we're putting all of our ideas together and our evidence and claims to support this uh, question that we've been talking about. And I'll go back to the question. We can review it. The, in the introduction of the text, the author states, for most oceanographers, a day on Alvin is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Using evidence from the text, support this claim using clear reason and supporting evidence. And then down here it says, answers should have paragraphs for these major points. Alvin has gone where no one has gone before. The trip was four years in the making. The scientists discovered never seen before creatures. And five hours of total concentration, the scientists are very tired. So, so far we've gotten together some of our ideas in our buckets that we're calling them. What I want you to do right now is look at bucket number one and share the most important thing that you've written down with your shoulder partner. Bucket number one. Okay. Tectonic, Bismarck, and hydrothermal vents. So bucket one. And then what do I write? Uh, Alvin has gone no where no one has ever gone before. Okay, let's see. Augustus, what did you share? Okay, did you share, Jurgen? Yeah. Okay, what did you share? I, well, for the second book, I said that... Oh, we're on the first bucket oh, still. Oh, okay. But, um, but Alvin has gone where no people have gone before. Alvin has gone where no people, has gone bef where no people have gone before. Did you have any evidence to support that that you shared with your partner? Well, it said in the text that they locate bombs, lost ships, and discovering things like the Titanic and the Bismarck. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Anyone else share something different about bucket number one? Do you have any different evidence that we wrote down? Marcus. Hydrothermal vents. vents, which are what again? They're hot steams of water coming out, right, and toxic gas. Excellent job. Okay, same thing for bucket number two. Go ahead and look over what you've written down. I want you to look for the important points and the important evidence that we've written down. They have lots of crew. Yeah, they said that it required the efforts of the people to have a quote. And backups. Lots and lots of Augustus, I want you to share with Sky. Okay? What have you got written down? <laughs> okay, Sam. Oh no. <laughs> what did you share with your partner? I said that um, this day's dive has been in the works for four years and has required the efforts of many people, motherships and crew, and other scientists, backup crew, planning for the harsh conditions. Excellent job. Great. So he actually <clears throat> restated, excuse me, <clears throat> that the trip was in four years in the making and then got into some of the evidence that we found in the text. Did anybody else add anything in their conversation or say something different? How about you, Sophia? What did you two talk about? Um, we, we repeated like that again. We kind of said what you said. OK, so kind of the same thing. <clears throat> we all kind of found the same information, didn't we? OK, good. All right, so we're going to move on to bucket number three. So go ahead and make a big three on your paper. <clears throat> So I've crossed off all of the points that we needed to focus on so far. So in bucket number three, we're going to focus on the scientists discovered never seen before creatures. So I want you to look in your book and see if you can find where we've named some creatures or where the author has named creatures that Alvin found. You can work with your partner. I'm going to give you two minutes to do this. It talks about the centiphore. And the uh, deep sea cucumber. So maybe that's not one of them. It's never has it been seen before. 
Okay, uh, real quick, uh, some people up here brought up a really good point. They're going through and looking at all the pictures. Are all the pictures of things that Alvin saw on this trip? Talk in your groups for a minute. Are all the pictures things Alvin saw? Okay, thumbs up if you think that all the pictures are things that Alvin saw on the sub. Thumbs down if you think they're pictures that he hasn't seen. Okay, so what's another strategy we could use to find evidence in the text, really Anthony? Skim the text. Skim the text. Looking for what? What are we looking for? Jurgen? Um, for like, um, for animals. Animals. And those animals had strange names, yeah. didn't they? They Latin were names. Latin yeah. names. Exactly. So you're looking for big words, and some of them were in italics. Yeah. The sideways printing. So you're looking for those kinds of words in the text. Sam? Um, are we allowed to use the paper where we wrote yeah. all the things? Yes, that you are. You do have notes where you went through and did oh, this. Yeah. That's a great idea. I would pull that out. Okay, you still got about a minute. I'll add another minute on. All the ones we named here. Have so what goes in buckets? You're supposed to space them out. I did. Like this. That's probably a good thing to use. Pause when you're finding stuff. Do you have your list that you made? Okay, so maybe does Chris have? Looks like Chris may have it, and Naomi and Allie. Wait, I can't think I do. That's my favorite. Sounds like pina colada. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. They didn't find a deep sea. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there just to check in and see where people are finding their evidence. Emily, what page? Um, tell me some page numbers that you've been looking at. 603. 603. What did you find on page 603? Um, okay, so those are the picture pages, right? Mm -hmm. And I talked about the pictures weren't always creatures that were found by mm -hmm. Alvin. Did you go into the text and find? Yeah. So tell me what page you found that evidence. Um, 604. 604. Okay, so let's write down page 603 for the picture. And then 604. Emily, would you mind reading to me what you found? Okay. And tell us where you are on page 604. Okay. Um, it's actually 605. Okay. It, it's, it's in the um, second paragraph. Okay. In about Six. the middle of the paragraph. Second paragraph. Okay, great. Go ahead and read um, it to us. Patiently for. Um, but, it, but it is the chemist who spots a deep sea cucumber flying over the sea floor, floor propelled, propelled by a waving colander of fluttering fused two feet. As it, as it passes beneath, Alvin continues to hunt for creatures. Okay, excellent. So he saw the deep sea cucumber fluttering across the ocean floor. The chemist did. Did everybody find that in your text? Go ahead and put your finger on it where it is. It's page 605, the second paragraph. So with that, you're going to copy it down, and you can put that in quotation marks. I'll put it up on the board so you can see what I want you to do. Jurgen, did you have a question? Well, I have another. You have another? I'll come back to you after we get this one written down, okay? Writing down, but it is the chemist who spots a deep sea cucumber flying over the sea floor.
Once you're done writing that down, you can start looking for more creatures that Alvin finds that maybe people have never seen before. I know Jurgen has one, and we'll get to you in a second. If you find something in your textbook, you share it with your group to make sure that you're all thinking it's the same good piece of evidence that Alvin has found something that no one's seen before. He discovered a Second. Second. Now it's his turn to start something. Yeah. And, and they found a dog named Dumbo, which is the Akapisu Tooth is Agassi Zi. No, not that. Oh. No, they didn't find it. Yes, they did. Look, look. They didn't find look. it. And uh, now it's just his... the nickname Dumbo. That's yeah. the new name. No, he nicknamed this one Dumbo. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. This one Dumbo. This is Dumbo. Isn't this one Dumbo in the color? Okay, Ozzy, and then I'll go to your gun. Ozzy, what page were you guys talking about, or had you gotten to a conversation yet? 606. 606. What did you find on page 606? The Safana 4. Okay, and what does it say? Where are you exactly on page 606? The fourth sentence. Fourth sentence at the top. Okay, go ahead and read it to us. It's a Safana 4, but not one that the biologist has ever seen before. Okay, perfect. So we've got a picture of the Safana 4 somewhere in the textbook too, don't we? Okay, good. So let's write that down. Then a creature that looks like a fried egg is suddenly illuminated by the sub's lights. It's a siphonophore, but not one the biologist has ever seen before. Have they seen other siphonophores?
Okay, while you're finishing up writing, I'm going to have Jurgen share what you found also. It's on 606 as well. Okay. It's at the last sentence. Last sentence. Okay. It says, the biologist, um, his face pressed against the port, his porthole, is started, I mean, is startled to see a very large jellyfish rising up past the sub. It is so large that it takes several moments for its body to move past a small window. Okay. And then they tell us it's the deep staria yeah, enigmatica. Perfect. Okay, good. So let's add that one too. The pilot, let's see, where did you start? The biologist, his face pressed against his porthole, is startled to see a very large jellyfish, deep staria yeah, enigmatica, rising up past the sub. And that's the one that's so large that it took forever to see it go past the porthole. So that's at the bottom of page 606. And it begins with the biologist. I'll leave it like that. After you're run, done writing down, and you can just write down the beginning of the quote because you have the page number here, so when you begin writing your paper, you can actually go back into the textbook and just grab this out of the textbook. So we're going to move on to bucket number four. Let's go back to our question. Okay, so we've done this now, never seen before creatures. Now we've got five hours of total concentration. The scientists are very tired. What do you think about combining those two? Do you think we should do that, or should we do two separate paragraphs about that topic? Talk in your groups for a second. What do you guys think? Uh, two um, different paragraphs. Two different yeah. paragraphs. Why? Just better organization. Yeah. Better organization. Better. Okay. Okay. All right. Interesting. Technique and backup group. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Aiden. Um, we think that it should be um, split into two separate paragraphs because it would be a lot easier because then we would just focus on what they did in that five hours time. Okay. And then, uh, and then why they're so tired. Okay. Did anybody think that we should combine those two? Sam, this group does. Okay. I want to hear why. Why do you think we should combine them? We said because the, um, we could combine them because we could say how many hours it took them to get that tired. That's why they're so tired. They're kind of related, right? They've been on this. Remember how big Alvin is. It's not very big. I'm almost six feet tall, and it's seven feet around. And there are three of them on there, and they've been on there for five hours. Can they move around too much? No. And what are they doing the whole time? Where are they looking? Outside. Outside their porthole. Okay. What do you think, oh, Matthias? I don't think they should. Oh, we should. Oh, we should have it two separate. It's because it kind of makes them, kind of makes it sound like the animals are kind of boring, so they're kind of getting tired of it. And they're not boring, are they? Uh -huh. They're pretty interesting animals to talk about. Sam? Well, I think they should go together because it will... Because the five hours total consideration would make you tired. I just don't think the sentence works. Like if we change up the sentence, it would be better. I think that's a great idea. I think we should change up the sentence. And I also, for the very simple reason that I don't want to write another paragraph either. Yeah. Do you want to write another paragraph? No. Let's combine those last right. two because they do fit together. These guys are working really hard and concentrating. And when you concentrate for five hours, on something, maybe one or two or three different things, you are going to be exhausted. Okay, so let's combine those two. So right now I want you to write down bucket number four, and then I want you to go into your text and find where it talks about how long they're on Alvin and why they're so tired or if they're tired. Does it talk about it? 
Do you have any paper in your um, binder? Look, there's a bunch of paper here. You don't have any paper in your binder? I'm asking you a question. Okay, so there is always that option too. Oh, it's right here. Um, it's on 609, second paragraph. No. What page? That's the last time you see four is that it ends. Heller turns out the lights and prepares to reset first. After five hours of total concentration, scientists are retired. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah. It's right there. No. Okay, I want to hear what you found so far. Hallie. What page are you on? On 609. Okay. And it's the second paragraph. And it's kind of in the middle. Oh, wait. Yeah. After. Five hours of total concentration, the scientists are very tired. As the subsurfaces, they review their notes, try to relax, try to stay warm, and don't try too hard to stay awake. Okay, good. So the part of the question was taken exactly verbatim right out of the text, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now we need to find evidence that tells us why they're so tired. It says right here that they are tired and that they've been concentrating, but now we need evidence. Why are they so tired? So what I want you to do besides this right here, thank you, is find where in the text it says why they're so tired. Jurgen, did you find something? Well, I found, like, it says crammed into Alvin's tiny passengers. What page are you on? Oh, uh, page, um, 598. 598, okay. Tell me where on 598. Okay. Um, um, second sentence. Okay. Crammed into Alvin's tiny passenger sphere, which is less than seven feet in diameter, are the pilot, a chemist, and a biologist. Okay, what does that tell you about concentration and being tired? Well, if you're crammed in that spot for like five hours, Okay. Crammed makes it sound like it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Okay, good. I think that's a great quote. So I want you guys to write that one down. He found it on page 598, and it's in the second paragraph. It begins with the word crammed. Crammed into Alvin. And you can just write that down so we can go back into the text and pull that out when we're writing. <laughs> When you're done writing that down, I want you to go find more evidence of how long they're there, if it talks about time passing, and how tired there are, they are, or how they're feeling inside of Alvin. I know how long it takes to get down where they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Three hours. Yeah. Wait, what about getting up right here? Three hours again, so it's 11 hours in total. 11? Yeah. Because they, they go down, they stay there for five hours, and then they go back up, which takes three more hours, which is 11. Yeah. So it's actually like 11 hours for having Aiden, what? Aiden, I've heard that you have a good idea. Well, I don't know where it is in the story, just I remember what, what it said, and it said that it takes three hours to get down where they are, okay. and it says that they're down there for five hours, so that's eight hours in total, and then when they go back up, it's 11 hours, so it, they're uh, in the cram thing f for 11 hours total. So Aiden thinks he remembers reading somewhere where it said it took three hours to get down to where they're going, and then they're watching for five, and then three to come back up. So he's thinking they're in there for 11 hours. Did anybody find that, Jurgen? Well, it's actually two hours. Two hours to go down. They have one hour to observe. Yeah. To observe? Okay. Yeah, okay. Where did you find that? Um, I just remember that. Do you know, Ava? Did you find it? Because you just. I think it was on one of the. It might have been on the second page. Okay. First and second page. 
Why don't you go ahead and look for that, Ava? Anybody else have anything to add about how the scientists are feeling on Alvin? Why are they so tired, and what are they doing? Keep looking. Find your evidence. Got it? Yeah. Okay, what page? 602. 602. Um, the, uh, the last paragraph. Last paragraph. Everybody turn to 602, your last paragraph. In the second sentence. Okay. It's taken two hours for the sub to reach the same point where the crew can begin their first of the Okay, so there's our time frame for us. That can tell us how long they're down there, and then they're observing for an hour. So we know then to get back up is two hours. Okay, good. Um, so we could add that if we wanted to, but that doesn't give me any a feeling of how those scientists are feeling or what they're doing, does it? Maybe after that sentence, Marcus? Um, the first one? Go ahead. Good. It's chilly in there. About 40? And I remember one of the questions that we talked about when we were actually analyzing the text asked how many creatures did these scientists find? Does anybody remember how many we talked about, Emily? Eight creatures. So if they're observing for one whole hour. I thought it was seven. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was seven. Were they down seven. on the seafloor for seven? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's one. Observing. And they saw eight creatures. Seven. Okay. Okay. Was it seven creatures? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Seven creatures. In one hour, they see seven creatures. That's a lot. It is a lot, isn't it? In one hour, okay, you are going to have to sit in Augustus's seat. And we're working on blue waters. Okay, thank you. So, what if we're sitting somewhere in a little hole, little tiny compartment with two other people, and we see seven creatures under our desk? Under your desk. Yeah, pretend that your Alvin is under your desk, and you're all crammed under there, and you're looking out, and you see seven creatures. Is that kind of a Good thing, or is it a bad thing? Thumbs yeah, up, it's thumbs down. It's hour. pretty amazing to see that many, isn't it? But if you're watching for that whole hour, crammed into this little compartment, how do you think they're feeling? Yeah. Jurgen? Well, I was, I was going to say that. Like, I would kind of be frustrated if only seven creatures. <laughs> I know. Like, I don't know. Crammed in there, cold for an hour. Frustrated? Yeah. OK. Anybody else? Jude. A little sore. Why are you sore? Because, I mean, if you're, like, in that small space for five hours, you're probably going to be sore on that house. Can they move? Not really. They have to sit in that seat the whole time. Okay. All right, so what we're getting into now is our reasoning for why we're putting these quotations into our explanation of the supporting evidence for our claim. These would be reasons why they're tired or reasons why concentrating for that length of time can be difficult. It can be frustrating. If you only see seven creatures, maybe you went down there and thought you wanted to see 70. <laughs> or maybe you went down there and forgot that you have to sit in that chair the whole entire time. And you're cold and you're tired. Matthias? Um, I would be annoyed because you would not be able to see everything because you're so crammed. and it's only going to be on one side uh -huh. and like some people's the other people's heads are going to be in the way <laughs> and likely. what was that word we talked about in the story 
when a we panoramic. want a panoramic view. You don't get the panoramic view, do you? The pilot might get the panoramic view, but you're stuck looking out your one porthole. Okay, good. All right, what I want you to do now is go back to bucket number one, and we're going to come up with some reasoning that we can use in our writing for why we're putting these quotes in to explain the claim. Dante, do you have your work? Beneath Blue Waters, go ahead and get it out. All right, so let's look at bucket number one. What do we have here? Okay, so Alvin has gone where no one has gone before. He's found hydrogen bombs, sunken ships, new life, the Titanic, Bismarck, the hydrothermal vent, and tube worms. What was our question, though? Most oceanographers, a day on Alvin is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. What are all of these things? What do all of those things have to do with having a once-in-a-lifetime experience? Talk in your groups about how these things make this a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We're going to be able to find the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> or the Bismarck. Or Atlantis. Or if you go down there and look at the scuba suit, you'd probably die. Yeah, it's crushing. I know. Kind of like right here. Kind of like it's, Ice Age. It says the tiny so right. Okay. All right, call that Sky. What's a big deal? Like if you find the Titanic. <laughs> Finding the Titanic is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because it's a once in a lifetime experience. Finding the Titanic is a big deal. Besides a once in a lifetime experience, how else could we describe finding the Titanic? Matthias? It, it's one of the biggest, um, biggest Oh, it's one of the biggest ships of its time. That, that's, no, that's, that's sunk, right? Yeah. Okay. What else, Jürgen? Historical. Historical. It's famous. Historical, famous, lots of lives were lost. Um, lots of them. Okay, what about those other things? What about hydrogen bombs or hydrothermal vents? Did you have something to add, Jude? Uh, no. Okay. What about the hydrothermal vents or the hydrogen bombs? What is once in a lifetime about finding those things? Talk in your groups. see them and then you wouldn't be able to go near the vent. This is what I would do. I would. Yeah. Frida. What happens at those hydrothermal vents? Did anybody talk about that? What's going on there, Aiden? Um, like toxic things are coming out of it. Toxic gas is coming out, but they found something that is pretty amazing that goes on where that toxic gas is. Yeah, it's, Emily? Um, it's really hot. It's like 350 degrees and okay. there's fish living there. Fish are living there, right? There is life. Toxic chemicals. Why is that once in a lifetime? What's pretty? What's amazing about that, Matthias? To actually know that the fish under, like the things underwater, can stand that kind of pressure. The heat and the pressure alone would Are kill that. us, right? So it's pretty amazing that there's something out there that can live under these um, conditions. So that would be something that. A scientist would probably want to study what makes these creatures able to live here. And it's interesting, something good to discover. Ava? That, that they live off of the chemicals that come off of the earth and right. they get all their energy from there. Yeah, they're not eating food, are they? They're eating basically all the chemicals that are coming out from our inside of our earth. So studying those kind of creatures makes it interesting to see how other things can live. Augustus? Bioluminescence. What about bioluminescence? Um, it helps them survive. Helps them survive. So what about bioluminescence would help me support the claim that this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience? 
Hmm? It would. It would, actually. Think about it. Do we get to see bioluminescent things no. all the time? No. No. So if we go down to the bottom of the ocean floor, what kind of animals are we going to see? Hallie? Animals that use their bioluminescence for, like, um, different, like, for, like, finding food or for... Oh, we talked like, about all of this last week, didn't we? So bioluminescent creatures, and they use the bioluminescence to, whoops, protect themselves for protection, to find prey. Matthias? It's actually 650 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 350 degrees. degrees. Thank you. Um, Celsius. Celsius, thank you. I'll change that. <clears throat> okay, good. All right, so let's move on to bucket two and do some reasoning for bucket number two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was about how long it took them to plan this trip. So if it takes me four years to plan for something, let's say I had you guys in second and third grade. And now we're here today, it's four years later. And when I had you in second and third grade, I was planning a big party to have. But I told you we have four years that we have to plan this party. Could you stand waiting that long? No. That would be so hard, wouldn't it? it? And some people might forget. Mm. Some people might be too excited. They might say, I can't wait that long. I need to go and be in someone else's class. I need a party tomorrow. I can't wait for four years. Some people might get into it, and this party might be the most extravagant thing ever, right? Because if we have four years to plan for something, that gives us a lot of time to think about the details and to get what everybody needs together and make it a pretty spectacular, once-in-a-lifetime kind of party. So talk about how planning for Alvin takes four years and why that's an important thing for us to talk about with the once-in-a-lifetime trip. Um, well, well, four years would be really awesome because so we know what we're doing instead of being able to just sing it. Yeah. Like, they have to like, 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 be awesome. awesome. Overheating. And the conditions. Good. Right. Well, we have to test it for, um, for leaks. For leaks. And we don't want it to leak. Definitely <laughs> no. What about the pressure? Remember when we go the deep down in the ocean? Yeah, yeah you've got to make it really strong, otherwise it's going to crush. Okay? How many people are there up on that boat, too, where Alvin's sitting and waiting? What are they doing? Uh, controlling it. Like the wires. They're controlling it. And also, do you think they're monitoring the inside of the tank and making sure everybody's safe? And, okay, you've got 58 minutes left on your oxygen. Uh, to make sure that scientists would like it too cold. Right. Yeah. Keeping that temperature at a good degree. Good. Okay. Parveen, what did you talk about? Um, like that, so they know everything that's going to happen and um, nothing goes wrong. Okay, so they need to plan ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So they're planning ahead for disaster, possibly. Yeah. Or to make so. sure that they find all these neat creatures, right? Or to find new life. Okay, excellent point. Marcus. Probably would have taken two years because uh, because Alvin fell off the mothership and it took them ten months to retrieve it. Okay, what? Why does that make you think it's going to take four years to plan? What about that? Because it took uh, because it took more time. More time for what? For them, because they might have thought that they could have done it like faster. And, so you think that 10 months was added on because they lost Alvin for that period of time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Actually, it takes them that long to plan the trip, no matter what, no matter whether Alvin's lost or not. Um, uh, we, actually, Sam. Because um, they had to like make the ship, too. Make the ship? The, they had to make Alvin, 
too. So, like they had to plan that, what they're doing down there. Plan what they're doing when they get down to the seafloor. Yeah. Okay, so we kind of have that right here. I said planning ahead for any disasters or to find new life. Anthony. And since it fell down, maybe they want to predict it like, and fix it up. Okay, so going off of what you said, Alvin fell off of the ship at one point, so maybe they had to come up with a new plan on how to make sure that wasn't going to happen again. Yeah. Okay, so securing Alvin. Okay. Marcus, do you have something to add? Uh, make a mothership. Make the mothership. I think they had already had the mothership, but what do they have to do to get the mothership ready? That's a good point, right? How many people do you think are on the mothership? A lot. What are their jobs? Make sure everything goes well. They're there to monitor Alvin. They are probably in radio contact with the crew that goes down on Alvin to make sure the temperature is okay. Angel was pointing this out. This group had a great discussion about what the crew would do. Do you want to talk about that, Levi? Please, thank you. Oh, that's a shame. That's too bad. Anthony? Well, we were talking about how the person, since it fell down, they have to, like, put a wire and make sure that someone on the mothership is, like, controlling the wire and putting it back up. Okay, good. So they've got a wire now that's attached to Alvin, and it helps them control Alvin going in and out of the water. Jurgen? Well, I was, like, they probably have to plan ahead for, like, weather and the pressure mm -hmm. and... Okay. The pressure under on the bottom of the ocean floor, what would happen to us? We would get crushed. We yeah. would get crushed. Remember that picture of the styrofoam cup? Yeah. Shrunk to nothing, right? Okay, good. Ava? Regulating oxygen levels. Good, regulating oxygen levels. Somebody's got to be monitoring how much oxygen is left for the scientists to breathe while they're down there. Otherwise, something could go wrong. You're going to have something Maybe else? training. The pilots and stuff. Training takes a long time too. It's kind of similar to when you go to NASA and they have to go through training programs for astronauts. It's the same kind of thing. These are guys, these guys are called aquanauts. So they'll go through similar training. Okay, good. So this is all reasoning why taking that length of time is a good thing and it will help them prepare <coughs> for a successful trip. Okay, let's go into bucket number three and look at some reasoning for bucket three. So this is where we talked about the creatures that the scientists were able to find. They're never seen before. Why is this making it a once in a lifetime trip? This is, should be an easy one. I'm going to let you talk for about 30 seconds. Why is seeing new creatures that something new creatures? Go the ocean. Is that one the first? Or might know more about the space? Sophie, Vogel, what did you talk about? Why is seeing these creatures underwater a once in a lifetime experience? It's hard to find those kinds of things, and they're not seen very often, and they're even seeing things that have never been seen before. Marina? They're the first people to find them. The first people to find them. Excellent. Okay, so um, first people to find them. No one has seen them before. Matthias. Um, they might be look, looking at a new form of a fish or something. Right, when we were by the hydrothermal vents, right? Yeah. Okay, so go on with that. Like, it might... Like a new species or Okay, something. good. Might be finding a new species. Yeah, and um, they might be looking different 
uh, they'll definitely be a shape. Yeah, they might. Okay, so a new shape. Look different. And because they are consuming, if we're talking about the creatures by the hydrothermal vent, do you think their insides are going to work differently than ours? Yes. Or than a regular fish would? Yeah, so the insides, the mechanics of the fish will be different. How it actually works. Marcus. Um, you might find like something, like if you find like a regular fish that we usually find like in a river, mm -hmm. uh, you could find uh, something that that regular fish would eat, like something new that it finds. Oh, so maybe finding this new fish will lead to even more new discoveries. Good, I like that. Okay, new fish, new food source. Okay, good. All right, bucket number four. I want you to talk about bucket number four and how those two things make this a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And bucket number four was where we talked about how they're tired and they've been concentrating so long. So what about those things can make this a once-in-a-lifetime experience? Um, maybe. Maybe not the animals. That's more realistic. There's a how are we doing? What would you talk about? It would be a school. Um, no, she's ready. If we had to find out her secret and see some pretty amazing things. Okay. Okay. Sit next to her window in our school. See her. Five hours. I'm going to call on uh, Naomi. We are talking about the Tired, Augustus? It would be a, a one life, one in a lifetime experience because it, they only get one time to sit in a um, camp okay, for like five hours. Okay, so these scientists get to do this once. And they're sitting for five hours. Matias just said they're bored. Do you think these guys are bored? No. Okay, why do you, who said no? Jurgen, why don't you think they're bored? First of all, they get to see new life forms and they get to name them. And <laughs> they get to come up with the yeah. name for it. And, and it would just be fun being one of the first people that be in a submarine. Like yeah, that's an exciting thing right there, isn't it? Just getting to go in a submarine. And then, remember, they are specific types of scientists. We've got a biologist and a chemist on there. Do you think they've trained to do yes. this? So they're probably waiting to do this. Just like when you were in second grade, thinking, oh my gosh, I have to wait till sixth grade to have this party with Miss T. Come on, sixth grade, this is going to be amazing. We've got a bouncy house coming, we're going to have cake, we're going to have pizza. Let's go. That's what they're waiting for. I cannot wait to get on that submarine. Um, I think it would be a once-in-a-lifetime experience because it would be crammed. Crammed? Cold. OK. And there might not be a bathroom. <laughs> so this group over here was very concerned about the bathroom. Do you get to go to the bathroom when you're on Alvin? Probably not. Crammed, cold, uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, Jurgen. Well, I think it would be once in a lifetime thing because you'll never be this like uncomfortable again. Like it's gonna be so uncomfortable. How often do you put yourself in a little tiny <laughs> circular submarine that's seven feet across in diameter with two other people, with two other people and a little tiny porthole? That oh never, God. never happens, right? With okay. equipment. With equipment. And what kind of equipment did they have? Do you remember? Cameras. Cameras. They've got special yeah. lights. Mm -hmm. And they have notepads where they have to take their notes. Ava, did you have something to add? Um, well, they're not. Uh, 
the space is small, but it's like the size of this desk that you have like around you, mm -hmm. and then a chair about this size. That's right. really how big it is. Right, that's where you're sitting. You're kind of stuck in that spot, right? Wow. Okay, good. All right, so you've got your reasoning now. I want you to pull out this paper. <laughs> it says at the top, four square graphic organizer. Go ahead and put your name on it. So let's look at the first box on the left-hand side. It says the first key idea or event. So what's our first key idea or event? Where would you think you might find that? Bucket number one. So go ahead and get bucket number one out. And I'll go back to our question. Which one? And you'll notice I keep going back to our question. This question is kind of a long question. And I can't remember it in my head. When I'm writing, I constantly go back to my question. What am I trying to prove? So right now I want you to read this and think for about 30 seconds. What are we trying to prove? You're doing this by yourself. Shh, just thinking. Okay, I want you to share it with your shoulder partner, what you think we're trying to prove. We're trying to Isaiah. Um, Marcus and me talked about it. It's like about, you're lucky enough to go into uh, Alvin and go down and um, discover a new life. Mm -hmm. It's a once in a lifetime experience. It is a once in a lifetime experience and you're lucky. I like that word. You're very lucky to get to go down there. So what could we write down for the very first key idea? Let's look here in our list of things we needed to include. The first one that I scratched off, our bucket number one focused on what, Parveen? That Alvin has gone where no one has gone before. Good, so that's your first key idea. Alvin has gone where no one has gone before. And then I'm gonna give you about five minutes to write down the details in that first box. And then we're going to be done for today, okay? So go ahead and do that. And remember, you've got all of your information in your bucket. You shouldn't have to look back into the text at all unless you need to finish writing down a quote. This is going to help you organize your first paragraph for your argument paper. Once you're done, I want you to share with your shoulder partner and compare what you have written and what they have written. Give them, the, give them a chance to finish writing. No, just one.
Okay, has everybody gotten a chance to share? Yeah. Yep. Fist of five, how many more minutes do you need to write and share? Okay. I'm gonna give you one more minute. Me too. No, no, wait, I'm just saying. Wait, oh, what are you doing? Okay, I'm going to have you stop right there. I've put orange and blue sticky notes on your desks. I want everybody to get one blue one and one orange one. The orange one, I want you to make a plus sign at the top. The blue one, I want you to write down the word wishes. When you're done, I want your eyes up on me. On the orange one, you're going to write a plus sign. And on the blue one, you're going to write wishes. Okay, so this one plus, you have another one wishes. Blue. Right? Do you have another one? Well, I have an orange. We need one more blue. You need another blue? Yeah, just one. Marina? What? No. I'm going to give you a purple. And the blue is what? I know. All right, on your orange paper, I want you to write things that you think work about bucketing. Does bucketing help you organize your work? Did it help you figure out how to put your paper together? What did you think about the bucketing? Was it a good thing or a bad thing? On the wishes side, I want you to tell me what you wish we could do differently about the writing process. Okay, so plus is what worked for you with bucketing, what helped you with your writing, and the wishes side would be more about what didn't go so well or what would you like to do differently. When you're done, they go up on the board under the right side. No, you don't need to put your name on it.